Hello friends, welcome to Reach Goals. In the last video, we talked about how to have a system designed for Redbus.in uh, and today we will talk more about how to scale the system. Uh, this topic is not more about the technical side, but simply about the strategy of how to do this, this how to do the scaling of the system. So if you have not seen the previous video, I would suggest you to go over there, have a look over there so that uh, it is easy to follow when you come over here, right? So if you look at the system, this is what we saw very much detail in the previous video. Uh, let me walk over a little bit to have something a little bit on hands on, right? So if you look at the system, we have uh, multiple folks interacting the system. Like, you know, we have customers, we have customer service, we have operators and we have business team interacting the system. And we also have a lot of backend systems like FTP, uh, reporting system which are still interacting the same services right so now if you see uh, the services these are these are something which are running on the pods which are on the docker and this has to be scaled in such a way to meet the traffic right and we have a mysql database it can get huge amount of huge volume of data and this 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 also needs to be scaled in the way what we need right so let's see one by one and see how we can scale the system to meet the customer demand right So let's talk a little bit about scaling. What is scaling the system? I can give a little bit analogy on that. Let's say uh, you live in a one bedroom home and you get married and you have a spouse and f after a few years you have two kids. Then after some time you have a uh, parents and coming into your home and you have guests and you have some other folks coming into the home, right? So you want to build your home from one BHK home to five BHK home, right? So it is not a small process, right? It takes time, it takes money. And it also needs a lot of effort. So everything across across the system has to scale. Like you know, uh, the electricity supply has to scale, or it has to increase. Uh, the number of bedrooms has increased. The car parking has increased, and the furniture has to increase. So it looks uh, it looks simple, but it takes considerable amount of time to achieve that five BHK home, right? So similar to that, when you start a software system, you do for a small level of system, like thousand customers, and slowly you scale to the level to meet the demand. For example, uh, let's say in case of Red Bus, you start with a small city where there are only 1000 customers and slowly go for the next level of city uh, to meet the new new demand or to meet the new customers, etc. Right? So during this process, we have to understand our system, how it works. So that's where we come into the stage called a pilot testing. We launch for one small city and we do a pilot testing and we get the results. Right. Uh, the results are nothing but uh, the feedback from the customers, uh, the hardware, uh, the, uh, the hardware abilities and the defects which are coming across the system and we have to fix uh, continuously and give the new builds, releases, etc. Right? So that's what uh, we call it as a pilot testing and to get all the input from the uh, input from the field. Right? So let's say let's say if you want to do if you want to scale a system like a red bus, what we do is we launch for us uh, launch the system for the first first city if after we have approved or if after we have fixed all the defects etc. So let's take a city like you know Bangalore to Chennai, right? So you will have only the Bangalore to Chennai which is visible in your system and customers coming over to the over to the system they can book the book the ticket from Bangalore to Chennai, right? And parallelly you will do a marketing of the product through the email or print etc. So that you will start receiving more customers. Customers. more the customers you will get more uh, defects or you will get to know about the system pretty much well uh, pretty much well so that you can fix the defects or you can even scale the system to meet the demand right and slowly you can also add more buses into the same route if you have more buses then again there is an obviously uh, more customers are going to come into the system and they are going to book the tickets right so you will understand your health of the system from the back end and you also know you also come to know whether you are uh, you, you can make profit out of this business or whether you can invest more into the system to make more traffic at make more traffic and to improve the business etc right so you have to continue the pilot testing to get the feedbacks fix the defects forecast the hardware capacity cpu ability etc etc right so once you are done with all these things then you go for the second level of city now you add another city like you know bangalore to hyderabad do the same kind of process for some more time, maybe for a month's time or a, maybe a couple of months to understand more about the product, right? So you will add, you will, you will keep on adding the bus routes, keep watching the progress of the system, uh, fix the defects which are coming on the way, uh, then you you also get the feedbacks from the customers, etc., right? So this will give you a clear understanding of 
how where you stand with respect to this in application then you can uh, talk you can pitch the system to the venture capitalist to, to understand you know I, I have a system like this and it is growing at this point of time and you can look for a funding etc right and this slide more pretty much talks about how do you scale the system this is a little bit of technical thing rather than the strategic point of view uh, let's talk let's talk let's let's talk about the technical thing as well uh, with respect to the scaling right so if you look at the the first picture which i showed which had all the blocks about the pieces like you know the services database the content etc so we have to scale all the areas right so that's what i said scale the services you have to scale the database scale the content etc so when when we talk about scaling the services uh, let's say we are putting this uh, application in aws or gcp both are the same level of mechanisms like you know there are three ways you can do the scaling one is first one is called schedule scaling and the second is dynamic and the third one is a predictive scaling what is schedule scaling so let's say for the applications like redbus uh, you know very well that you know the traffic is going to be very high during the holiday time let's say that there is a diwali or a new year uh, that definitely the traffic is going to be high on those days so you will schedule the system in such a way that i want uh, so, such, such a way that you are going to get more traffic or more transactions per second during these days and i want to scale the system uh, to a level what, whatever you want right so that is called scheduled scheduled uh, scaling what is dynamic scaling dynamic scaling is basically you know it's a it's based on the need let's say uh, you don't know when the traffic is going to hit the system. Let's say when the traffic comes to a uh, comes to a certain level, and you want to scale your system uh, to the to the to the level to meet the customer needs, right? So those are all called dynamic scaling. So what it does is you set a policy saying, you know, uh, when the CPU threshold goes beyond a 60%, I want to add one more EC2 instance, or when the transactions per second goes beyond a certain limit, I want to add one more T one more at uh, one more ec2 instance these are something we call it as a policy and it can be configured through the command line or through the aws console similar approach is there for a google cloud platform as well right and what is predictive scaling predictive scaling is a little bit new and it is it is done through the machine learning so what uh, aws provides is they can understand about your system uh, in a predictive way like you know let's say for example if you have a logs uh, for the last five years with the last five years of logs they can understand very well when your system was getting more traffic right so let's say if they go into the logs they will know very well during this time to this time frame there was a diwali holiday right so i want to scale uh, scale uh, my system and add one more ec2 instance during this time of day so the machine learning algorithm automatically crawls your applications logs or the data provided to the machine learning algorithm and it determines to add one more ec2 instance uh, that is called predictive scaling right so what do you mean by automatically increasing the ec2 instance for service based on the policy as i said earlier uh, as i said earlier we have to set a policy in such a way like you know when the cpu threshold goes beyond a beyond a 60 percent or when the transactions per second goes beyond certain limit we have to uh, increase or we have to add one more ec2 instance to the group that is called uh, setting the policy and that helps automatically increase this that helps to increase the ec2 instance and so that you can scale accordingly and the other one is scaling related to the database so if you see in your system when you add more number of customers or when you add more number of routes uh, to the application what happens is the database gradually grows so at one point of time let's say you see 1 million uh, records there or 1 million customers are there in the database now you figured out that hey, my database cannot go beyond this limit i want to add one more database right so that is what that is what we call it as the sharding so how we can do is the how we can do as a sharding is there are multiple ways to do the sharding one of the one of the ways uh, uh, one of the way is to do with the with the with the splitting the customer id let's say you take customer id from 1 to 10000 and put it in one database take from 10000 1 to 20000 and put it in another database right now you shift your traffic for the customer coming from 1 to 10000 into first database and 1 to sorry from 10000 1 to 20000 to the second database so you can you can divert your traffic based on the customer id to different database so in this way you know you will not exceed the database capacity and you can keep on growing the database uh, horizontally so that's one of the way we can do uh, one of the way we can scale the database which is called as a sharding and the other one we have to do is uh, as i said we we have to scale the content right 
So, so we are going to get a lot of traffic and you will have a lot of images in your application and if your images are put in one location and everybody across the country is getting the same images, it is not going to be faster. So that is why we go at a mechanism called CDN, right? content delivery network. So we put, uh, we, we publish our images to the content delivery network and what they does is they take your images and scatter across different regions so that when you, when you hit the, when you hit the server, it automatically picks the images from the closest network. The most popular C uh, CDN is like, you know, Akamai, uh, which is, which is, which is primarily used in most of the e-commerce kind of applications, right? So you can do all the static contents like, you know, images, JavaScript, HTMLs, which are static and you can publish to the content delivery network and they take from the closest location and all this, all this information are cached, right? So that gives an ability to scale our content, right? As this is how you scale the software uh, so based on the, this is how you scale the software uh, for the red bus, right? Okay. And now let's talk about the real time production issues with some examples, right? So let's say you have these kind of a system in production and, and it is serving the purpose and meeting all the business needs, right? So you could end up in a lot of production issues, uh, which is, which is a real time thing. And let's talk more a little bit about that. The first one, uh, first one is memory leaks or bad code, which leads to CPU spike. Let's say you have a fantastic Java code return and is running as a microservices, right? So you forgot or you missed to test one of the piece, which is leading into a memory leak, right? So what happens is when the memory leak happens, the the capacity to process gets keeps on increasing, and with, without any need, you know, CPU will get spiked, right? So what happens when the CPU spike? As we talked earlier, we would have already set a threshold like when the CPU goes beyond a goes beyond 60% or 70%, we have to add one more EC2. For in this case, without any reason and because of memory leak, your CPU has spiked, uh, right? Because of the CPU spike, you have added another another EC2 instance, which is not acceptable at all, right? So it will keep on adding the EC, EC2 instance without any need, and it adds cost to the cost to the company so this is this is this is how how do you fix this you obviously have go go walk into the code uh, figure out what is the reason for memory leak and you have to fix that right so that is that is related to the first one which is which you called as memory leak bad code uh, which leads to the cpu spike and the second one is unpredicted bus traffic what is unpredicted bus traffic like let's say you have a system running running in a perfect shape right so now you are uh, you are S somewhere your application or some of some of the URL in your application has gone viral like you know like somebody has put a put in a social media that you are providing a great deal or a free tickets right so what happens is without even predicting multiple people come and in, come and in, come into your system right so the traffic goes beyond what you have kept for scaling so most of the time what we what the company does is they won't they won't allow to have a unpredictable uh, I mean sorry unpredictable scaling they will have a maximum threshold to have the scaling right so what happens is when you have a bus traffic and if you are meeting uh, the higher level of the target what happens is the system crashes right so that is what we call it as the unpredictable bus traffic so i can give an exp uh, i can give an example like you know when the pokemon go was launched they didn't predict the traffic in the way they were expecting right so on the first day itself within few hours this is all the systems started to crash and the other example i can give is when the ipad first version was launched there was uh, there was the company didn't predict that they are going to get so much traffic right so the sales was very high at that point of time and you know the system uh, expected or the system was getting more traffic than what has been set at the higher level and it got crashed within 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 a within few minutes of the launch right it took hours to fix that and come back to the normal position right so the third one is uh, third one is uninfo uninformed marketing campaigns what is uninformed marketing campaign so normally sometimes what happens is it's not normal actually sometimes very rarely what happens is there could be a communication gap between the marketing team and the engineering team right so marketing team can launch a campaign or email campaigns they can send an email notification to the existing customers that they are going to have a, a deal or offers uh, for a ticket from this day to this date so when as soon as the people or the customers see uh, these kind of till they immediately log into the system within a few within a few seconds or few minutes so this leads to a again it leads to a cpu spike and automatically a uh, number of ec2 instance gets added very quickly and if it gets added very quickly you know there could be a possibility of getting crashed right so we, we have to forecast all those informations and we have to make sure everything is running in a, a smooth way as we are setting up 
as we have set up originally right most of the things has, uh, uh, most of the things we discussed this has to be operate has to be managed by the operations team as well as the engineering team right uh, i think pretty much that is that's what i want to talk in this this and if you have any comments you have you can put in the comment section and to see more videos you can subscribe uh, if you like please like the videos and if you want to share this with your friends please don't hesitate to share thank you have a great day. Bye.